Our belief system that we walked in this place with today is a culmination of all the ups and downs that have happened in our life. We believe certain things because certain things have happened. Amen? We, we've seen things happen and that made my belief system. I've, I've experienced things and that causes me to have my belief system. But our belief system either keeps us from God or the things of God or throws us into the things of God. Amen. Father, in the name that's above every name, Lord, we humbly come to this time right now, Lord, to open your word. We thank you for your grace. Amazing grace, Lord. Saved a wretch like us, Lord, that even while we were yet sinners, grace made a way. We thank you for today, what you've already done and what you continue to want to do in our lives today, Father, as we, your children, Come into this place, Father, to give you honor and glory and to thank you for your goodness and your grace. So we now sit with ears and eyes that are open to hear what you're going to say to us today. So for that, we praise you and we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. A scripture that I want to share briefly, you don't need to turn to, it's Proverbs 23 and 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In praying and seeking God during everything that's going on in the world, Harvey, Irma, earthquakes in Mexico, I was sharing with Mary Jean, they showed a a story of a lady in, in, the, her, uh, in the earthquake in a building that had fallen down on her. And they found her 24 hours earlier and all they could find was her leg. And they were talking to her and she started waving to them with her leg. It took 24 hours for them to remove her. But she's alive with just, just something. Very little, very little damage. I want to talk this morning about our belief system. What do we really believe? If you look at a definition, it says, a state of mind in which a person thinks something to be the case with or without evidence to prove the case. A mental representation of an attitude positively oriented towards the likelihood of something to be done. Our belief system that we walked in this place with today is a culmination of all the ups and downs that have happened in our life. We believe certain things because certain things have happened. Amen? We, we've seen things happen, and that made my belief system. I've, I've experienced things, and that causes me to have my belief system. But... Our belief system either keeps us from God or the things of God or throws us into the things of God. Amen? Now, the most positive belief system uh, in the Bible is the lady with the issue of blood. I'll just use her as an example. Twelve years, this woman had suffered from uh, losing blood. Spent all of her money, been to every doctor, Every doctor told her, you can't get better. This is how you're going to live your life. So because of experience, her belief system was going to go with what the doctors were saying. Come on, everybody understand what I'm saying? If you get told over and over that you've got cancer and you're going to die from it, your belief system becomes, I'm going to die. But the revelation of God's word because some one day, now why it took 12 years, I don't know. But one day, this woman heard about Jesus, the healer. Amen. And her belief system hit the revelation of God's word. And she said, if I might just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. Her belief system went from one of death to one of life because 
of the Word of God. Are you understanding what I'm saying this morning? Without the Word of God, we are going to be ruled by our belief system. Without the Word of God. I'm just going to, I believe it. You know, I grew up with certain beliefs. We've all done that. We all, uh, how many of you, your belief system has changed since you got born again? I need to see more hands in that. How many of you changed your belief system because you got born again? See, that's what, that's what the word does. You know, the Bible talks about the mysteries of God. You know what the greatest mystery of the New Testament is? The greatest mystery? that Jesus preached, that Paul preached, they all preached. The greatest mystery was that a Gentile was going to be likened unto a Jew. And they both were going to come together. And Paul keeps saying, it's a mystery. Because the Jews said, we can't have that. Our belief system is the Jews. Our belief system is the Gentiles are outside of the goodness of God. And so Paul says, no, I'm going to show you a mystery, Bubba. The Jew and the Gentile are one in Christ. Amen. It's a great mystery. But see, the word of, hallelujah, the word of God will destroy our old belief system. Thank you, Lord. Because I've had some goofy beliefs. The devil, greatest trick is to keep you in your old belief system so that you won't experience the goodness of God with a new belief system. That's his trick. That's his trick. I'm, I'm going to jump ahead, but I love Luke 5. I love Peter. And Peter had a strong mindset. He had a strong belief system about fishing. He had done it all of his life. His belief was, sometimes you catch fish, sometimes you don't catch fish. My belief system is, you fish at nighttime. That's my belief. My belief is that you throw the net in the shallow. That's my belief system. And one day, here comes revelation. Everybody say, one day. One day. See, the same thing is going to happen to our old belief system. One day, Jesus is going to reveal himself to us. And our old system is going to be destroyed and we're going to walk in this new system. I believe totally that's why Jesus said in John 3, Nicodemus, you got to be born again, Nicodemus. Because if you don't, if you're not born again, you're going to have live in that old mindset. You're going to live in that old belief system. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because Nicodemus was a Jew and he believed like a Jew. And Jesus said, no, with that, with that belief system, you'll never move forward. Right. See, there's a lot of us today, we're not going to move forward until we get rid of that old mindset yeah. and that old belief system. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born by the Spirit of God. Because see, it changed his mindset. It changed his belief system. People that believe they were born that way, and that's why they are the way they are today. Okay? How many know? A lot of people believe that. I was born this way. That's my belief system, so that's why I am. Well, that's why Jesus said you got to be born again. Because when I'm born again, i got a new system. i got a new uh, 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 way of thinking, and it's revelation of God's Word. Thank you, Lord. Where was I? Peter. Peter had a mindset. I'm going to get to Paul in a minute too because he, he, even, he was zealot. But one day Peter is confronted with revelation. And he's fished all night and they ain't caught nothing. Here comes Jesus preaching. And there's such a throng of people that they're pushing him into the Sea of Galilee. And so he says, Peter, can I use your boat? <laughs> he said, might as well, it's not doing me any good. So it says that uh, Jesus got in the boat and preached to the people. Amen. And when he got through, he's all through, and you'd think he'd just walk away, but he didn't. And he said, Peter, look at me, boy. Launch out into the deep, let down your net for a mighty catch. Now here comes the old mindset. See, something new has been presented to me. Something new has been presented to me, and, but hey, I got my mindset. 
This is the way we've always done it. Amen. This is my belief system. Jesus, I'm a fisherman. I know how to fish. I know when to fish. I know, I know where the fish are. I know the net. I got, I got all that. I got the boat, the whole enchilada. But something, because Jesus said it, it broke the power of that old mindset. I can say hallelujah to that. It broke down and destroyed that old belief system in Peter. And he got to the place and he said, however, everybody say however. (laughs) However, at Thy word. Amen. See, that's where, we, that's where we've got to get to destroy that old mindset or that old belief system. Amen. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Don't know what happened to her, but boy, she heard something good. Yeah. If I might just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made. See, her, and she had 12 years I mean, I'm sure someone, she said, well, I'll never be healed. I'm never going to get any better. I don't have any money. I'm never going to, nothing's ever going to happen. But the revelation of the word penetrated, penetrated her heart. And she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment. A new belief system that's one, not a partial, not a partial belief system. But a solid, if I just, she was going to get it. She was going to get it. She was going to get it. <laughs> but see, when, when that happens, this is what's so neat about Jesus. When that happens, when someone says, I have a new mindset, I have a new belief system. My new belief system is if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. That was her new mindset. And when she touched Jesus, it made him stop. See, there were a lot, there were a lot of people touching Jesus. They were, everybody's touching Jesus. Let me get a little touch here. Let me just touch here. But it, they, their, 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 their situation was the same. Amen. Their mindset, their belief system was, well, maybe he, you know, maybe he will, Brother Mike. Maybe he won't. I don't know. Maybe it's not my time. I don't know. Maybe he likes her more than he does. See, that, that, that'll destroy. But this woman was so firm and zealous. And it caused Jesus to stop. People are bumping into him, bumping into him, wondering, well, why are you stopping? And he said, someone touched me. And they said, excuse me, Jesus, everybody's touching you. Right. He said, no, someone touched me. I felt the power of God. Amen. When we get to that place that we have a mind change, when we have a new belief system, all hell is going to break loose. And he said, something caused me to stop. The power of God came out of my body. Because she had a change of heart and her mindset changed. She said, she said when I touch him, I'm going to be better. When I touch him. The story of a little boy, I think Charles Capps tells this years ago. There was a little boy that was crippled. He couldn't walk. And mother took him to a a tent meeting and a preacher was there and the preacher was preaching. Then they had a healing line and uh, they said, who all needs healing come up. And the mother had to carry the little boy down because he can't walk because his feet are crippled. And the, and the, the evangelist laid his hands on him and he said, father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that you heal my, heal this young man right now in Jesus name. And the little boy heard it. The little boy heard it on their way home. He says, mama, can we stop by Walmart? And she said, darling, well, why, why do we need to stop by Walmart? He said, I need to get me a pair of shoes. Hallelujah. And she said, what, what's up? She said, the man prayed over me and told me that I was going to walk, so I need to get me a pair of shoes, mama. They stopped at Walmart. He said, a pair of shoes cost $13, which the, it broke the mother. It broke the mother. 
but she bought her boy a pair of shoes for $13. They went home, they put the shoes by his bed. He got up the next morning, he put on some socks and he put on the shoes and he started walking because the man of God said, you're healed in Jesus' name. See, that's a, total, that's, a, that's a total change of experiences. It's a total change of the way I used to think. Nicodemus, you've got to be born again, son, so that you can see the things of the kingdom, so that you can, you can walk into the things of a kingdom. It's a, to, it's a total belief in the things of God. The Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul that makes a statement about the Apostle Paul. They said he was a zealot for Judaism. When he heard about Jesus and the message and what people were preaching, he said, give me the authority to go throw them in jail. I won't get, let me go do that to them. This is wrong because it goes against my belief system. This is what I believe. He said, give me a letter. So he went to Damascus to get a letter of authority where if he ever met a Christian, he could throw him in jail. He said, this is my authority. I'm going to throw you in jail because that's not right. He had a belief system. He was a zealot. He said, it was fanatical and uncompromising. But the revelation of the word, Jesus knocked him off his donkey. Amen. Now here's a, uh, you know, if you think, well, I, know, I can't change my mind. My belief system is this. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus can take care of your belief system Amen. in a heartbeat. Amen. And Paul said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm the one you keep kicking down the road. And Paul said, what would you have me to do? This man that was a zealot fanatical, uncompromising about the Jewish faith in a heartbeat went to be fanatical and uncompromising about Jesus Christ. Amen. He can do the same thing for us. Amen. Holly, give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Lord. It's all about changing our attitude and believe in what we've always been. I just, I think of people that, you know, if your daddy always tell you you were dumb and stupid and you'd never amount to anything, you form an opinion about yourself. You have a, you have a mindset. This, this is my opinion. This is, this is what I think about myself. But then he, somebody goes to a meeting and they find out that Jesus said, you're the apple of his eye. Someone tells you you're the head and not the tail above and not beneath. It says, you're the, you're the apple. You're the, you're the best looking thing I've ever seen. When that becomes revelation, then it wipes out all that bad negative junk that, that's been, been told to me. Amen. Does everybody understand what I'm saying this morning? See, we are, we, we are here today because of those things that we believe are that we've been taught. Uh, several instances, but it takes the revelation of the word to do that. Totally Full bore, believing the Word of God. I've shared this many times with Mary Jean and I. When we first got saved, um, we were in a church, and, and uh, I tipped God if I had it. You know, boy, to give 15 bucks a month, that was a lot of money, honey. That was my belief system. I don't know who took care of the church, but it surely wasn't me. But all of a sudden, we heard about tithing. Tithing, 10%. I'm dying on, on $15 a month. How am I going to live if I tithe? But see, it became a revelation. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying this morning? It doesn't just happen unless it's the mystery of the grace of God that his word is true. And Mary Jean and I got a hold of it. And we said, well, we need to start tithing. And, and, and here's, my old, here's my old mindset. Here's my old belief system. I can't afford it. I can't do that. Good night. And, and back then, I can't remember now what kind of money I made back then, but I was a salesman, and, and I made good money. And, uh, but, but I was giving him 15 a month, and now he wants to give me hundreds a month. But because the word was revelation. I hope you all are catching this. It's, it's, it's got to be the rhema, not the logos. 
It's got to be the rhema of the world. And, and Mary Jean and I, we came into agreement and, and we started tithing when in the natural, there ain't no way Jose. Amen. Thank you, Lord. you know, I'm barely living on giving $15. How am I going to live now on three or four hundred dollars a month? See that? And my own mind, no, hallelujah. My own mindset could have kept me in bondage. My own belief system could have left me in bondage and would still be there today. But the revelation of the word, and, and tithe, let me tell you something tithing was not to get from God. We didn't tithe to get. See, that's not revelation. That's soulish. We didn't tithe to get. We tithe because the Bible, we receive from the Bible, give. And it's better to give than to receive. You understand what I'm saying? And he'll, re, he'll open up heaven and he'll rebuke the devourer. See, it's got to become revelation. Paul, who was fanatical and uncompromising for his faith, when he got saved by Jesus, when Jesus revealed himself to him, he became fanatical and uncompromising for the things of God. Aren't you happy for Paul and Peter, who wrote most all of the, uh, all of the Bible? See, but they had, to have a, they had to have a mindset change. They had to, their belief system had to take a turn and that's what happens to us, uh, us when we got born again. When we receive Jesus, my old, it says, uh, old things are passed away. You know what those old things are? My old way of thinking. My old way of thinking. It's no longer, are we going to make it? No, my mindset now is, my God shall supply all of my needs. I can do all things. Where before, I can't do nothing for Dale. I can't do nothing. But no, I can't do. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen? The revelation of that word comes in and changes us. See, Genesis chapter 3, Eve in the garden. She had a belief system. And the devil asked her, what's your belief system, girl? Well, my belief system is that we, can, we have all of this. We have all of this. But that one tree right there, don't, don't, go, don't go near it, don't touch it, don't eat it, don't sniff it, don't smell it, no nothing. That's my belief system. And I believe because if I do, I'm going to die. And the devil comes, you won't die, darling. You're just going to be smart. See, that's what the devil wants is to keep us or to break our belief system. You're praying for someone to be healed and they die. It'll shake your belief system. And the devil comes to you and says, see, there it doesn't work. I say, well, devil, let me tell you something. It does work. And there's a special place for those that die in faith. There's a special place for those that die in faith. And it doesn't, it doesn't shatter my faith at all because my belief system is solid. What's going to happen to the economy? I don't care, but my belief system is solid. What's going to happen when the doctor gives you a, a bad report? My belief system is in Christ and it's in his word. Come on now. Isn't that right? That's my belief system. Someone wants to say, I, I, I was with a man yesterday and uh, uh, he said, well, I believe, I believe, I believe. He said, yeah, but that's totally contrary to what the word of God says. Well, I believe this and then this. Where'd you get that from? Well, I just believe it. Well, no, but the Word of God says this, 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 and this. See, people are going to believe some junk unless the revelation of the Word comes to them, and that's where we are. Amen. We put the revelation. We, 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 we say this is the revelation of God's Word. Let me finish with this. Our old man says this, do unto others as they've done to you. <laughs> Tip, don't give. Overcome evil with more evil. Hate your enemies. I'm not a sinner. I don't kill or steal. See, that's our, that's our old mindset. But my new man says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. 
My new man says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. My new belief system is love your enemies. Pray for those that persecute you. See there? That's, see, our mouth changes. I don't still speak that old belief system. When someone asks me, and, and I've got a bad report, my report is my God is able. My report is God, that nothing's impossible with God. You see what I'm saying? That's the voice of this new creation that we are, that Jesus said to Nicodemus. You're, you're born again, not by, not by the world, but you're born again by the Spirit of God. And you've got the revelation, and you can receive the Word of God, and you can take it to the bank and say, this is my belief system. Amen? Amen? Stand to your feet with me this morning. Hallelujah. A lot of people say, well, my belief system is that nobody goes to hell. Well, that belief system will take you to hell. <laughs> Come on now, we hear people say that all the time. Well, God's a, he's a loving God. He's going to send no one to hell. The other belief system is, well, everybody, uh, Buddha, Hare Krishna, uh, Jehovah, I mean, all of these people, they all have a way to heaven. Well, if it, ain't, it doesn't include Jesus, they ain't getting on the boat. Come on now. Amen? Our belief system is what the Bible says. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son. Amen. We're not trying to exclude anyone. We're just trying to get more people in the boat. That's my belief system. Now, a lot of these other beliefs, they sound really good. Just like it sounded good to Eve. See, it sounded, ooh, that sounds good. But it isn't good. It'll kill you. Someone tells you, well, you, can, you can't do that. Well, no, the Word says I can because nothing's impossible with God. Amen. I love speaking about things that seem like someone said it's impossible. Amen. I, 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 just, I love to get in that conversation where someone said, well, it's impossible. Because you can come back and say, well, I, I don't think, not on my watch. No nothing's impossible to him that would believe. But see... That's the revelation that causes this new belief system to flourish. Amen. Are, are you understand what I'm saying? Amen. See, it, it's, it, it's the revelation of God's Word that changes my old way of thinking. My, I used to believe that healing was for someone and, and, and that God had special people. And He only healed special people. Did everybody ever think that? No. God's heart is to heal everyone. Yes. Ah, thank you, Lord. This is going to hit you about 2 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Amen. Bow your heads with me. Father, we praise you. Lord, if anyone has come in this building, Lord, with that old opinion, the old belief system, Father, Lord, I just pray today that your word, the revelation of your word will open them up so, Lord, whatever they're believing for, whatever they're asking for, Lord, that you would reveal to them that you are the answer and that you do have for them, Lord, the desires of their heart. Is anyone here this morning that would raise your hand and say, Pastor, I want to know that revelation of Jesus. I want Jesus to become real to me as he seems to be real to you this morning. Is anybody here that would raise your hand and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I need Jesus in my life. Thank you, Lord. I need Jesus to be part of my life. I need Jesus to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Oh, and have faith to know that he does that. Oh, that he wants to do that in Jesus' name. One more time, anyone else that's here this morning will raise your hand and say, Jesus, come in and take over my life. Everybody, let's say this. I surrender, I surrender. to your will for my, life. for my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For you that raised your hands, would you just run up here real quick? Just come up here real quick. Just come real quick. That's a, the first step of faith that you'll take. Come up here, ma'am. You raised your hand. Come on. Come on. Come on, mama. Come on, mama. You raised your hand. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? See, the, the Bible says, and I'm going to talk to my daughter right here. She didn't do anything 
Because the Bible said it's the Spirit of God that draws us. It's just like he threw a rope around her this morning. She, she'll say, well, no, I walked down that aisle. No, no. <laughs> the Spirit of God loves you so much. He walked down with you. Put your hands out towards her. What's your name? Chris. Chris? Father, in the name that's above every name, I just pray over Chris right now. Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word, how it changes life. Like you told Nicodemus, you're telling Chris, Chris, you must be born again so that you can walk and talk and enter into the kingdom of God. And so we just said, we've already prayed, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm a new creature in Christ. Did you say that prayer a while ago when we all said it, Chris? Thank you, Lord. Father, I receive Chris right now. The whole congregation, we receive Chris right now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. She's a new creature in Christ. She has no yesterday. She only has tomorrow. And so I thank you, Father, that the Spirit of God that drew her down here now lives inside of her. And her confession is that Jesus Christ is my Lord. And when I ask him to forgive me, he forgives me. Is that your confession now, Miss Chris? Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we receive her into the body of Christ. And Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. Work in her and through her and for her, Lord, and set her up, Lord, where she'll hear your word and another word she'll not listen to. And so we praise you. We thank you for this, uh, this precious time, Lord, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. <laughs> you got the... Here's a napkin right here. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Chris to stand down here. Some of y'all, before you leave, come down and just hug on her and give her a... Amen. amen. You're now part of the body of Christ, Chris. You just went from one place into another place. And this other place is good. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. Tuesday night, we're still doing on faith. And uh, next Sunday is our communion Sunday. We had to miss a communion Sunday. But Brother Jack will be uh, ministering next Sunday, and we will be doing communion. Amen. Shake a hand, hug a neck, tell everyone it's good to be in the house of the Lord.